Hello, everyone. Good evening. Today, we are so exciting about introducing our new instructor, Dr. Shoda Tsuchi. Dr. Shoda Tsuchi, he is actually one of my very old and best friends. We work together on very complicated cases. That's my very first full arch implant cases, actually, that I, you know, recently I published a lot and I talk a lot throughout my presentation. But today, we are very honored to have him to critique upon, you know, a lot of surgical procedure, especially the field that's focusing on the zirconia implant that typically, you know, the rest of the world of us, we're not so familiar on. So let me give you guys a brief introduction about Dr. Shota. Dr. Shota graduated from Osaka University, the dental department, and he continued his specialty training also in Columbia University, the periodontal department. Upon completion, uh, upon completion he went back to uh, Japan. He practiced uh, uh, as a private practitioner, as well as teaching in Osaka University, also the periodontal department. Currently, he owns his own private practice. And I just talked to him. He actually now, he's the very first periodontist that he practiced solely periodontal surgery in Japan. He's the very first one that he gets started. So we are very exciting to uh, have Dr. Shoda to be with us, to give us the innovative concept from Japan. So um, carry on to the article for today. We are going to have two residents to present for us. The first article will be presented by Dr. Kuo. And um, the title, why don't you bring up your um, slide for now? OK, good. So the title of the article would be the immediate one piece zirconia implants with without xenograft and the buccal gap. It's a six month preclinical study. So um, you could get started right now. OK, uh, good evening, everyone. So our, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so our first topic today is about immediate one piece of gonad implant with without xenograft in the buccal gap. And it's a six month preclinical study. And this study is based on the animal experiment. So because I got two dogs, so maybe you might hear something crazy bark. So you might want to say something about that. OK, so straight down our first uh, introduction. So there are several facts we need to know before we started to discuss the article. It is already known that one piece zirconia implant perform better than two piece zirconia implants. And for immediate loading protocol, two piece zirconia implant is not so predictable for now so far. And when we compare to the titanium implant, it look like the it's look like that we have almost the same result and same survival rate with the titanium implant. Okay, so one piece zirconia implant had very good response under uplift for loading. So it can be an alternative to re replace titanium implant in fresh alveolar suckers, especially in the maxilla area. And because the color of the zirconia, the response of the aesthetic is usually better than the metal color. And when using DBBM graft around zirconia and titanium implant, cover with collagen membrane studies show that no difference of new bone formation and implant osseal integration. During early healing and function, distance between implant shoulder and crystal bone will increase in zirconia implant. And one piece zirconia dental implant presented a uh, favorable long-term clinical result. Adhesion of plaque and creeping attachment are even better than natural teeth. And compared with the titanium implant, the gonia implant demonstrated a significantly reduced ligature-induced inflammation and bone loss 
for Z, uh, for Zagonia ZLA coating implant. And this is maybe due to the increase of adhesion, viability, and proliferation of osteoblast and gingival fibro, gingival fibro, fibro, fibroblast on zirconia and peak surface compared with the titanium. And then we go straight to the study design. So the experiment subject is mongrel hung dog. Their mean age is 13.5 months and the weight is 20.5 kilograms. Uh, after the surgery, all dogs were kept in a group canal with indoor and outdoor area. They fed with granular food and previous weighted in uh, water. All drink water is unlimited. Dog's health was monitored daily during whole study period. And this study was designed as a randomized controlled trial with one healing period for the comparison of two treatment procedures in one healing period. Study select one side of the dog mandible is test group randomly, and the other side will be the control group. So this one dog, uh, one side of the mandible is control group and the other side will be test group. The study was performed in one surgical phase include tooth extraction of the third and fourth premolar. And immediate in zirconia implant will place in the distal root socket. And the implant which study uses uh, Stroman pure ceramic implant which size in 3.3 millimeter and length in eight millimeter. Okay, the one piece zirconia implant used in, uh, in the article have four millimeter abutment height and 1.8 millimeter machine neck and eight millimeter ZLA coating surface. In the test group, uh, after implant placed, Bio-Ox collagen will graft in the buckle gap and no grafting material in the control group. And PM3 means the third premolar. The PM3 buckle gap will, will less than two millimeter and the PM4 buckle gap will greater than two millimeter. And both group had more than three millimeter uh, in a three millimeter depth in buckle gap. ZLA coating surface is equal or slightly apical to the buckle crystal bone. So all surgery were done under general anesthesia induced by propofol. All dogs were premedicated pre with methetolamide and morphine. During the surgery, the animal was continuously monitored by a vet. And post-operative pain was controlled by the administ administration of morphine and meloxicam as anti-inflammatory drug for five days. In order to maintain the oral hygiene, the oral mucosa teeth and the implant were disinfected three times a day by using gauze socket in a 0.12 percentage chlorhexidine solution for the first two weeks. At the same time, a toothbrush and the 0.2% chlorhexidine gel were using plate control. Like the picture showed, premolar was carefully extracted and flapless immediate implant placed in the distal root socket. Okay, so after six months of healing, the dog was sacrificed. Um, the lower jaw was dissected and fixed in buffer 10% of other high solution at a temperature of four degrees for a week. All data were analyzed and calculated by the points showed on the picture. So the S stands for the shoulder of the implant, 
the ZOA means the limit of the rough surface. And the author also calculate buckle bone thickness in one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter apical to ZOA. The C is the crystal, the crest of the buckle or lingual bone wall. And VI stands for the most coronal point to the contact between bone and implant. So the result is that in the test group, one implant is failed at six weeks because of the lack of osseal integration. And after six months healing, all implant was visually healthy. So on the upper right picture is PM4 buccolingual section of the same dog. In the test group, buccal bone thickness near crest was strongly different to the control group. And the lower right is PN3 area. Height and width of the buccal bone in test group were also greater than the control group. So when we look closely, higher magnificent, oh, higher magnific magnification of the buccal bone crest with the presence of bio as the arrow shows the yellow particle or trapped in the newly formed bone. And, and the most right, the picture will show that in the control group, the thickness of the buckle bone is extremely less than the test group. So when we talk about the histometric measurement, we are, the first we're gonna talk about the vertical height of the bone. In table one, which is ZLA minus CI, we can find that the median of the first bone to implant contact on the test side was at the more colonial level than on the control side. And this value are statistically significant difference. For the ZLA minus BI measurement, higher vertical bone loss was observed in the control group. And the right table two calculate more about the relationship between ZLA and buccal bone crest. The same happened with the crest with minus 0.52 millimeter in the test group and 0.64 millimeter in the control group. And also with the statistically significant difference. So in here, the, the value of minus, which means the bone is uh, higher than the CLA rough surface. So in table four, which still focus on the ZLA, BI, and C, which means a crystal. Author calculate the value of PN4 and PN3 separately. In general, vari va values in PN4 are lower than PN3, both in test and control group. Uh, control group had higher vertical bone loss, both PN3 and PN4. In control group, vertical bone loss in PN4 is lower than PN3. And then we talk about the horizontal uh, measurement. Table three mean uh, measure three points of buccal bone thickness, one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter apical to VLA. In terms of median value, the test site achieved an increased in bone thickness over control side in every point of interest. At one millimeter is 1.12 versus 0 0.6 millimeter and two, and at two millimeter is 1.01 millimeter in test group. So all the data, all these values was statistically significant difference by work some rank test. So the last table has a lot of numbers. In table five, author calculate the value of PN4 and PN3 separately. And it shows higher value on the test side in terms of 
the width of the buckle bone when compared to the control side for all measurements. In PN4 side, ZLA and ZLA and one millimeter apical to ZLA had statistically significant difference, but no difference in two millimeter and three millimeter. And to talk about the PN3 site at ZLA level, which had the same value on the test and control group and has no difference in the PN3 group. So after so much values, which give us uh, the um, some some points that we need to discuss. The first one gonna be the bios collagen in the fracture extraction socket will modify the process of the bone healing, providing additional amount of hot tissue growing. The resorption is more markable with the wide implant than with the standard standard size implant, which means we want there always be a gap. Uh, when we put the implant into the socket, especially in medium placement. In other research using titanium tissue level implant, they also observed that about 1.43 buckle bone height reduction. The number are almost same with this article. And the use of xenograft in a in a gap improve the width of the buckle bone wall, is for sure. And uh, the Balenco, which who published an article in 2019, concluded that in case of thick buckle wall, which greater than 1.5 millimeter, and the thick gingival biotype with uh, with the buckle gap with less than 1.5 millimeter in this kind of scenario, buckle gap grafting the will be the benefit of buckle bone grafting would probably be minimal. This result obtained with the titanium implant and in human, but is a little bit different in this experience with one piece zirconia implant graft. Graph xenograft in buckle gap uh, in this study will significantly reduce vertical resorption of the buckle bone. And the buckle plate is very important. The thickness of the buckle plate is uh, as important as the vertical and the horizontal position of the implant in the socket. And in this study, because uh, Mandibular premolar has two roots, so we leave a uh, post extraction alveolus wound next to the implant site might alter the healing process. It's a limited limit of the this study, and it is known that the fabless immediate implant surgery produces a significant reduction in vestibular biological width and minor reduction in buckle bone fat resorption. So we go to the conclusion. After reading the article, when in immediate one piece zirconia implant placement, place of bio collagen in any size of buckle gap will modify the process of heart tissue healing and provide additional amount of heart tissue. So, um, so uh, in my previous learning and limited knowledge, I sum up with several points when placing titanium implant in maxillary fresh extraction socket compared with the uh, zirconia one piece implant. In the left side, the titanium implant, we tend to place narrow implant parallelly and have some gap between buccal plate and the fixture. We need to measure the gingival biotype, the thickness of the buccal plate, and the distance of the buccal gap. And all of this will affect if we need to grasp the buccal gap or not. In the coronal part, we need to 
we need to have uh, mechanical tissue support to avoid tissue collapse. Uh, when the tissue collapse, which might compromise the future soft tissue count cavity. And in the right side, one piece zirconia implant, we conclude from this article. We also tend to choose narrow implant and place platelet. ZLA coated rough surface of implant was slightly submerged to buccal crystal bone. And we need to grab the buccal, gra buccal gap, no matter the distance between buccal bone and the implant. And in, in, in immediate implant protocol, since titanium and zirconia is almost the same, I think. So the last side is my personal op opinion because we don't have zirconia implant in Taiwan. So my knowledge about zirconia implant is extremely limited. Here are some points if I read the article and it's all come from my imagination. So uh, if there are anything wrong, please correct me at any time. So first we talk about the surgical part. The one piece implant abutment always have to expose in the oral cavity. When placing zirconia implant in bone, if the bone quality is not as good as we plan or saw on the CBCT, any lateral force might interfere in osseal integration during early healing process, which could end up in implant failure. The second point is that uh, zirconia is known as tissue friendly, but we still need to be prepared to deal with periimplantitis. Do we have enough knowledge and tool to treat zirconia periimplantitis? Will be a big question we need to ask ourselves before we place zirconia implant. When we face buccal bone loss or remodeling, the margin of the abutment might be exposed and because the shade of the tooth color in Asians were usually darker and yellower, especially on the cervical part. So somehow we still need to solve the aesthetic problem if the margin is exposed, just like tightening implant. And in the prosthetic part, I think the residual cement cleaning will be the biggest problem. Not like bone level implant, we can use school type prosthesis to eliminate the possibility of residual cement. The margin of the zirconia one piece implant abutment is usually subgingival, which makes cement cleaning even harder. And in immediate provisionalized scenario, residual cement might affect healing process and cause more buccal bone resorption. And the last point is when we need to use uh, multiple implants to restore, restore edentulous reach, unlike bone level implant, we can use angulated abutment to compensate different implant angles. We need to place parallel to each other, which is highly technique sensitive. Another concern is one piece implant only have close trade impression. The accuracy of the impression might be uh, might be hard to control, and we need to double check about that. So in my opinion, all implants are good. The most important thing is that we need to consider all the scenario we will encounter. Think slowly before we started to treat any patient. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. So uh, why don't we go back to the previous slide? No, no, um, go back to your last slide. Okay. So I think uh, uh, the reason why you picked up this article, I think the main focus will be a couple of things. Number one is talking about zirconia implant, the utilization of zirconia implant and the benefit of that. Number two is one piece zirconia implant. And the third is how we utilize it in the immediate situation, how do we benefit from that? not to talk about in conjunction with the breath procedure. So um, Shoda, let's have you commenting and give us the instruction. You know, uh, there are past residents. I know that the for, you know, for the boxes and the column, reading through 
the numbers, maybe you want to give us some input and tell us how do you see upon this article and what do you want to introduce us to? Okay. Uh, anyhow, so first of all, thank you for your introduction, Dr. Kuo. And the, another Dr. Kuo also has a good <laughs> presentation, good review for this paper. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I uh, pick up these papers, actually two papers today, I want you to answer the two questions. So the first one is uh, what is the uh, characteristics of, of zirconia implant? And also the another one is uh, how do you evaluate the paper as a clinical like an implant research paper? Mm -hmm. So the zirconia implant is is not only like material itself, but also like surface characteristics are different from like those of the titanium implant, right? Mm -hmm. So like a, they say that ZLA compared to the SLA. Right. Right now, the, everybody examined how the zirconia implants are in the human body may or may not react similar to the titanium implant or not. Um, so that right now it's very still early stage of the zirconia implant study right now. So most of the studies are to uh, confirm the similar characteristics of the titanium implants or to find the difference between the zirconia and titanium. Mm -hmm. So the, not all of them, but a study design of the some zirconia implant study is uh, just to follow the previous study with uh, using a titanium implants, like maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's for you guys to, it's a good paper to learn the clinical research basics. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that I bring up, wrote up this paper. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now the, let's talk about the zirconia implant. So we need to know that what the zirconia implant is, right? So mm -hmm. but I think you guys already know that zirconia can be also integrated without any problem because the Strowman has a rock solid. That, right. that one is made by like a combination, like a titanium and the zirconia, right? Mm -hmm. So that, I think it, it's it's a good point. This is a good point, right? So I know you, you guys cannot use a zirconia implant in Taiwan, but uh, yeah, it's kind of, you, you already have a rock solid, rock solid right? I think so, but it's just uh, Taiwan FDA. I, I'm not so sure if they actually received approval in Taiwan to be able to. Of course, we have Stroman, but I don't know for this particular implant whether they submitted for the approval already or not. Do you have like a SL active surface? Yes, we do. I think it's all the SLs, SL active surface is a rock, rock solid, I think. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, but yeah. Uh huh. But anyhow, we. Yeah. Uh huh. So the so zirconia zirconia is very it it seems to be like a biologically better than the titanium implant mm -hmm. implant in terms of less soft tissue response mm -hmm. and also the less uh, susceptible for the peri implantitis. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, the, we, we, we go, we're going to talk about the other papers for the peri-implantitis. Mm -hmm. it, it also, the significantly less bone loss um, in the like, experimental uh, plaque-induced animal model. Okay. But there's also disadvantages of the zirconia implant. And so first of all, it's for the mechanical strength obviously so that is why I, I think it's i one piece implant was coming to the market first and then that those this research is used that one piece implant right mm -hmm. but after that actually two two pieces two piece implant which is a bone level implant is mm -hmm. become became available right now mm -hmm. like nobel has that uh Stroman also has that the two piece mm -hmm. the two piece. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, yeah. and also that we need to think about the surface modification. Like I said, that they have the ZLA in the Stroman uh, zirconia implant surface, but mm -hmm. this is a, might be different from the SLA surface. Mm -hmm. Most likely, it's a moderate rough surface, but uh, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But we still don't know exactly what's the difference is. Mm -hmm. So, so um, basically, what you're mentioning yeah. about is in terms of first zirconia implant, regardless one piece or bone level, uh, we're looking for two perspectives. One is the tissue polarization; it's tissue friendly, right? So, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, uh, based upon the uh, bench study, the animal study, it seems it has less chance of developing uh, the pair implant disease that's possibility yes because of the polarization the creeping effect around the soft tissue uh, uh the soft tissue around the implant or actually we are not sure we, we're going to talk about the, the other study uh, okay. but we are not sure yet but it's possibility yes okay and in terms of heart tissue the surface treatment for um uh, different from the SLA, the ZLA, uh, you mentioned about the ability of us integration. It seems promising as well. And that's the reason why we want to start to experiment this type of implant, right? Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So basically, I think uh, for me, because uh, that's the, the first question, as you mentioned, what's the value of the zirconia implant? For me, I always ask myself the ability of, of us integration. It seems like, you know, aside from those patients that they're allergic to titanium surface, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically the ability of us integration has been achieved predictably by titanium surface, right? So yep. what we're looking for is what, as Dr. Tarno said, you know, we want to see how the soft tissue is healing around so it can have this barrier, the stronger sort of prevent from the invasion of bacteria. And that's what I, you know, I, when I see the zirconia implant, I will expect, you know, it has the similar osteoporation as titanium surface, but of course have the better ability of the tissue around it. Do you think that's also the, re you know, how you see the benefit of zirconia implant? Yeah, actually, that's a good point. That's that's why the, everybody tried to uh, do a research recently, like uh, last few years. It's a lot of research about the zirconia implant, not the zirconia abutment, zirconia implant. Yeah, right. but uh, oh. yeah, we still don't know yet. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. most likely, yeah, it's very, it's uh, yeah, I think it's right. a good point. Yeah, because I remember uh, when talking about the design of titanium implant, we try to pursue, you know, different ways of design. Remember the laser, the intralock, you know, we laser at the surface, you know, at the color of the titanium implant, try to have this perpendicular sharpest fiber, the fibers mm -hmm. integrated um, sort of over the platform of the implant. So it seals over as a barrier to prevent the bacteria invasion. And mm -hmm. You know, that's from Bio Horizon, as you know. So throughout mm -hmm. the years, I think we try to, you know, have different experimental way. But with the zirconia implant, that's what the area I was expecting as well to see whether, you know, as you mentioned, you're going to talk about more. But I think the value of that is it's, you know, it's promising. However, uh, one of my concerns is also, you know, if it becomes two pieces of bone level, we always concern because zirconia is more brittle. It's not, mm -hmm. there is no forgiving for the friction, especially the force to unevenly distribute it when you have this, you know, occlusal force, especially performing exclusive movement. So that's why I guess, you know, as, as you mentioned, now this article is still one piece implant, but in the future, I think it will have the further you know, development to overcome the problem for the interface because the force has to distribute, you know, somewhat preventing yeah. it from fracture for sure. Otherwise, it would chip just like zirconia button. Right. So that's why they, in the another paper, they placed in the zirconia implant with a, only 35 Newton centimeter uh, mm -hmm. for stability, but uh, the titanium implants at a 50 Newton centimeter. So Correct. It's, Correct. It's, so uh 
when we when we think about like a full mouse uh, treatment, then we need initial stability. But mm -hmm. uh, when we when we use the the corneal implant, it, we might not be able to get yeah good initial stability. So yeah, right, correct, You're right. But still, you know, the I think the power of how the tissue can proliferate and having this barrier to create develop around the implant, I think that's definitely adding up the value to avoid the further parent disease. So I think that's still, you know, one of the features that we're looking upon. So uh, mm -hmm. talking back about uh, the statistics, do you Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we 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 still need to talk about a lot. <laughs> we might not be able to finish it yet, but yeah, anyway. Okay, so um, we when we talk about the design, we need to mm -hmm. talk about the design of the study. So mm -hmm. uh, I think as, as Dr. Kuros mentioned about like uh, uh, Araujo study. Right. So you you must read the Araujo study, like 2005, which is for the healing extraction socket, and then mm -hmm. uh, immediate implant for the 2000. I think it's 11. Yeah, two papers. It's very very good papers for the mm -hmm. actually. Those are also the doc study. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Kuo, but it's, <laughs> everything is a doc study. This dog is, you know, it's, it's saying no, it's yeah. barking. Okay, so in the, so Araujo showed that the bundle bone is very, it's, it's resolved anyway, with or without the bone graft. And the bundle bone is very thin. So once it's resolved, its height of the buccal bone is lower than the lingual bone, which is a very thick bone. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's see figure seven. Can you show the figure seven? Yeah, I think it's go go back to the slides. Yes, on the bottom of the figures. No, go go forward. I think it's forward. No, go back. Forward. Yeah, that one. Okay. No, I think it's you can go forward a little bit more. More. I, I, it's like two pictures in the top and bottom on the oh. right side. This one? Yeah, exactly. That, right. Okay. So uh, when, you, when you see the bottom of the pictures, mm -hmm. they have a uh, control group. So. Mm -hmm. it, the buccal side is going to be a left, and then lingual side is going to be a, a right. So mm -hmm. the buccal side, uh, the bone height is a, actually is a lower than the lingual, and the buccal mm -hmm. bone thickness is much thinner than the lingual bone thickness, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Araujo shows that it's also resolved even with the implant. So that's why that's, we want to place the slow resolved bone graft into the gap. Mm -hmm. uh, so, right. So, in this study, they the Araujo used the titanium implant, and then mm -hmm. in this study, it's just used a zirconia implant with the same uh, concept mm -hmm. design, yeah, same study design. All right, and then we go into like a data, like a statistic, uh, table one. Can you see the table one? Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so this is actually very interesting. Uh, I wanted to see actually not the buckle flat buckle data, it's the data on the lingo. Mm -hmm. Uh the lingo, no graft, no flap, right? So mm -hmm. it has to be the same situation, either for the link uh, test group and the control group, but right. for example, like a, you can see, like a dog seven, PM four, mm -hmm. on the lingo. Mm -hmm. like the test group is minus two point zero two, and mm -hmm. the control group is one point eight nine. It's almost like a four millimeter difference. Difference, difference exactly. Mm. This is a lingo. Mm. Mm. I think it's it's a, it's a data. It's not quite consistent. So I think, I think it's so you can find this data. There's a problem. <laughs> yeah. so like a, I think it's some implant might be placed deeper, and the another mm -hmm. might be placed shallower, mm -hmm. because this is one piece implant, right? So when we right. place 
two stages, like a bone level implant, we mm. can see the bone directly because right. there's nothing, nothing above the implant. Right. But uh, when we place the one piece implant, the implant is just covered like uh, like a lingo bone. And then mm -hmm. You never know where where the margin is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. that's a really cool. Uh, go to uh, next one, uh, table two. Here, at the right side. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's the right, yeah, it's the right side. So, so you're talking about sorry one one more uh, one more second. So you're talking about the data. At, at, there is this like four millimeter of the difference. That might because it's difficult for you to observe the true platform because it's a one piece implant, right? One piece implant, and also right. I think its color is a very similar to the, like a Polish color and the right. ZLS surface. It's very right. very similar. Okay. So you don't know actually like how deep you should go. For instance, you have to equal to the crest of the bone, but you don't know which part is actually the rough surface for you to integrate it on to be equal of the crest of the bone, somewhat something like that, right? Yeah, because when I see like Araujo study, actually mm -hmm. I, I I will show you I will show you the later the, mm -hmm. that study. It's 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 a lingual side of the uh, the the bone height is mm -hmm. almost the same either in the test group and the control group. It's okay. only the 0.1 millimeter difference between them. Gotcha, because it study, makes more sense because we didn't touch, right? We didn't touch anything about a lingual. No, lingual, no. Right. 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 So, so mm -hmm. if, if the median is going to be like a minus 0.39 is on the test group and then 0.19 is a, a control group, right? Right. It's a small right. difference, but it's still different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that, so the depth of the implant this might be affect to the buccal side. Mm -hmm. well. Right. So the number that's reflecting over here might not, you know, reflecting the truth. That might just become the error of the implant placement. That's what you're yeah. talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's the bias collagen. It works to preserve the 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 height of the buccal bone and also the mm -hmm. thickness of the buccal bone. However, mm -hmm. this data is not very consistent. So mm -hmm. I don't I, I don't want to compare it to each other. Mm -hmm. you know. Got you. Gotcha. Uh-huh. So table two. Yeah. Let's so, go to yeah actually I I I I I'm talking about also the to, uh, table two, but uh okay. table two yeah should be fine yeah i think it's it's time it's we we need to we need to think about the time too okay carry on to the next article or you want to comment yeah on i think uh, yeah okay. any questions about the i think that okay. is an interesting point about this paper okay so what you're talking about for uh when we look through the table we have to make sure to see whether the number is reflecting the true number that's you know contributing from the xenograph. So we should compare you know the lingual lingual part of the of the bone high as the standard. See what's the difference, and we will yeah. know how they perform. They operate the implant placement, right? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I, okay. I, I, the last thing I want to mention about so like a bone height on the buccal side is always lower than. Uh, always lower, either in a control group or test group. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm sure that this statistically significant, which they mm -hmm. show, it's good. But uh, its data is not really consistent. That's that's what I want to mention. About it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so let's carry on to the second article. So the no. second article will be presented uh, by by Dr. She. So uh, the title of the article will be Clinical Histological Comparison of the Soft Tissue Morphology Between Zirconia and Titanium Dental Implants Under Healthy and Experimental Mucositis Conditions. It's a randomized controlled clinical trial. Please start it. Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to present this paper. 
The aim of the study was to clinically and histologically evaluate the loss of tissue morphology under health and experimental mucositis condition, comparing the cornea and the titanium dental implants in a randomized control study design. As mentioned before, the study was designed as a prospective RCT with two consecutive randomization process resulting in four equal treatment groups. A total of 42 patients was recruited. The study population were patients presenting at the clinic of reconstructive dentistry were consecutive enrolled between June 2015 and February 2019. The prerequisite as below. First, two missing adjacent teeth in the maxilla or mandible. Second, imposition of premola and the molar. Third, at least one tooth present adjacent to the indentulous space. Fourth, the need for a reconstruction on dental implant by patients. The inclusion criteria, age, Sorry. The inclusion criteria age between 18 to 80. No medical contraindication to implant treatment. At least 10 millimeters of vertical bone height in the mandible. At least 6 millimeters of vertical bone height in the maxilla. And at least 2 millimeters of correct nice tissue. The exclusion criteria, smoking more than 15 cigarettes per day, poor oral hygiene, plague control records over 30%, patient with active periodontal disease, and the pregnant or breastfeeding woman. After pre fully prepared for implant surgery, the flap design as the photograph. There are two implant materials. First is diameter 4.1 millimeters of cornea implant. Second is the same diameter titanium implant. Both implants have similar shape and a, and a polished surface of layer substitute component with 1.8 millimeter in height. After implant placement, the port of the cornea implant is 35 newton centimeter compared to 50 newton centimeter of the titanium implant. In case of the buccal bone plate, dehiscence or demonstration defect, GBR was performed. If need sinus lifting, bio or collagen was used. All implants healed transmucosally. Next, let's talk about post-operative care. Patients rinse chlorhexidine twice per day for seven days. They prescribe the painkiller and antibiotics, suture removal after seven to 10 days, and then oral hydrate infection for another three weeks. Three months later, patient returned for baseline measurement and the second randomization cycle. Experiment to mucositis phase less than for three weeks. They were divided into two groups. The healthy one continued cleaning habit. The mucositis one stopped cleaning and mouth rings. So total four groups were established. Why don't you go to the result first? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm telling her in Mandarin that you she <laughs> let's not get you, you know, Mr. Trent. <laughs> but you have to make some comment, you know, show that you have to just I will leave you time to make critique on it. Thank so you. let's take a look yeah. at the result and why don't you uh, comment on that? Directly, okay. When you draw, why don't you, when you just continue on the result? Okay, the result in baseline a total of 42 patients at 40 implants and 40 biopsies were applied. 
At baseline, the play control record of a dependent variable was significantly lower in groups the cornea M with 4.2, as compared to other three groups with values. At three weeks, higher value were obtained for the mucosidic groups. In addition, titanium M also been significantly higher than the cornea M. Okay. At baseline, the bleeding on probing as a dependent variable was significantly lower in group titanium H compared to the other groups. But at the three weeks, the BOP value decreased in the two healthy groups, remained stable in group titanium M, but increased significantly in group titanium M. Probing depths range between 2.6 and 2.7 in all baseline measurement. At three weeks, the value decreased slightly in all groups. Here is the picture is the integration of the previous statistics. And talking about the result of microbiology, there is no significant difference in total bacterial load between baseline and the three weeks measurement. Also without significant elevation of marker pathogen. A mature oral epithelium was observed in the biopsy. It has few characterized layers and the degree packs. The amount of white blood cell was very low. The length of the junctional epithelium was very heavy. The lamina propria mainly consists of dense collagen fiber, only few of neutrophil macrophage, but no eosinophil. There are higher lymphocyte and the plasma was noted. For number of inflammatory cells at the level of the junctional epithelium, there is no significant. And for the length of the junctional epithelium, there is no significant difference. But for the overall epithelial thickness, there is significant difference. But for the ratio of the two measurements, there is no significant difference. So there was no relation between primary outcome and the other variations. Based on the difference of titanium and the cornea of the primary outcome, Cleaning, PI, probing depths, BOP, and the length of the junctional epithelium and the ratio of the junctional epithelium and overall tissue thickness revealed no significant effect of this difference. There are some points of discussion. The first is the overall very comparable outcome for all four groups. From a, a clinical point of view, the baseline value are considerably comparable for the cornea and titanium implant under healthy condition. Under experimental mucositis condition, results were more favorable for the cornea implant. The plaque control record remained lower and the bleeding on curbing did not decrease, while there was a significant increase for titanium implant. Second, a significant increase in for in PCR and the BOP in the mucositis groups, a significantly higher record for the titanium implant. Compared to other studies, the inflammatory parameters were lower. It might be because unrestored implant or no splint providing. Third, no difference in the random appearance of marker passengers. The, vari the variance of total bacterial load was high. The number did apparently not increase in the two experimental mucositis groups. Marker pathogens seemed to appear at random. Fourth, no difference in terms of the number of inflammatory cells at the level of the junctional epithelium. There is more cell infiltration in junctional epithelium, especially in groups the cornea H. However, it's not statistically significant. 
Also, the increase of the infiltration and structural assailing, the dominant type of the inflammatory cell are lymphocytes and plasma cells, which are possibly related to immunological or chronic reactions rather than bacterial inflammation. Fifth, an increase in tissue dimension for the mucositis group. In mucositis group, no elongation of the functional epithelium, but an overall increase of the dimension may be due to the tissue edema. Six, an association of higher probing depths with more inflammatory cells. Different implant components can cause different problems affecting the depths of the periodontal pocket. So in the conclusion, the present RCT revealed similar clinical outcome for the cornea and titanium dental implants under health condition. Lower plague and bleeding scores were found around the cornea implant under experimental mucositis conditions. No significant difference between groups were found for the majority of the histological results, including the number of inflammatory cells and the length of the junctional epithelium. Uh, here's my critique. I think the first one is the small sample size may cause the standard deviation to be similar to the mean value or even wider. Too large a discrete value may cause the statistical result to be imprecise. And the, the second one, there has 40 biopsies were applied, but only 22 were analyzed. I'm curious about what went wrong with the processing of the samples. The last one, while well, providing a splint to the patient to cover this area during oral hygiene procedure could lead to more instinctive mucositis conditions. Okay, okay let's, uh, let's talk about technical message. The first, there is lower plague and the BP in the cornea implant under experimental mucositis condition, but I think it still needs more cl clinical evaluation and further study. Last, no significant difference between titanium and the cornea of the historical result, no matter in number of inflammatory cells or the length of the junctional epithelium. Mm. Okay, very good. Thank you for review. Uh, she has been very thorough about you know what's happening about the research and what's the result and she concluded very well i think you did a good, very, very good job so yeah, uh let's all right very thorough so looking back um let's skip her critique so i want to hear about how you critique on this article show that and how you want us to take away so why don't you look at the data straight and and see okay. how you want to introduce us yeah, but uh, before that, we want to, we want to talk about uh, periimplantitis a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's as I said before. So uh, the cornea implant might be like easier for the periimplant tissue maintenance. I mean, even even the patient doesn't clean well, they might be unlikely to have inflammation or maybe bone loss, which means mm -hmm. uh, periimplantitis. So that's uh, uh, so right now we still don't have any better treatment protocol for the treating periimplantitis yet. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why the best thing we can do is the prevention. Correct. So that's that's why like uh, zirconia implants might be like a, one of the great great option for the brain, the mm -hmm. preventing periimplantitis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to um, figure where are we going? We're we going to uh, table, maybe table two. Table and two. Table two, it's a lot of data one. Yeah, this one is a table two, right? Really? I think so. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, the In terms of PCR, of course, the the zirconia mucositis group and the titanium mucositis group, they, they didn't brush. So PCR has to be higher than the healthy group. It's, right. it's, it's good. Uh, in terms of the BOP, Mm -hmm. Um then right. So zirconia, the mucositis group is uh, it's a significant significant statistically significant lower than the titanium mucositis group. Mm -hmm. But when you see like a number of the that's the oh this where's the mean? 
Uh, you mean the mean value? Mean value is uh, 11. 11.67, That is a mean, mm -hmm. right? But uh, when you take a look, take a right side, that mm -hmm. was uh, the next one is a SD standard deviation, and the uh, next one is a minimum quarter uh, quartile one, the median quarter three, and mm -hmm. the max maximum, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then. The me when you when you take a look at the median on the zirconia mucositis group and the titanium mucositis group, it's the same, sixteen point eight seven. Can you point it out? For us? Right, sixteen sixty seven, sixteen sixty seven over here. Right. Right. The minimum is a, both of group is a zero, and the mm -hmm. maximum is also the same, eighty three point three three. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and then right. can you go to the uh, figure four? Figure, not a table. Yes. Do you have a figure? Exactly. The fig it's a graph on the BOP is in the middle one, the red mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. On the right side. Oh, can you go back? Yeah. Okay, this Just, one. Yeah. So do you know that how, how to read the box plot? So like the, the bottom one of the box is a first quartile, which is 20, 25%. And then mm -hmm. top of the box is the third quartile, which is a 75%. Mm -hmm. And then in the box is between the 25% to the 75%. Mm -hmm. And then the midline in the box is uh, median. All right. It's not the mean, it's a median. Okay. So the when you when you compare with the zirconia mucositis and the titanium mucositis group on the BOP, mm -hmm. it, the box is a little bit different. So when when you see like a first impression, mm -hmm. looks looks like a difference. But for right. example, like median is the same. Right. Right, like a line in the, in a box, mm -hmm. the same height. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna say it, it's it's same. If the data shows that difference, but mm -hmm. it's not a lot of difference between that. That's what mm -hmm. I wanna uh, mention about this data. So when you when you see like the data, I we don't wanna see like a lot of numbers like a table two. We mm -hmm. we wanna see like a graph. It's easier to. Uh, to read there, yeah. Read, exactly. But uh -huh. you need to see the numbers as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what yeah. you're talking about, so in this, in the middle of the figure, the red stripes, so you can see the zirconia, they're comparing the bleeding of probing on zirconia and titanium. So in this mm -hmm. stripe, the red stripe, uh, so the top is 75%, the bottom is 25%, but the, the, the line, the black line that's in the middle that's the medium right yeah right so as you mentioned that is a perfect point so the medium it's all the same but you can definitely see the difference of the stripe from the top and the bottom because some is longer and some is shorter and it varies at the different area so as you said that's correct because when you see the data the mean number might be the same but it was actually reflecting different meanings the various right. might be different yeah that's very true so in the, in the titanium mucositis group is 25% is a 50% is the same same number which means like uh, more like maybe half of the, the like samples is just exactly the same data like 16.67%. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So right. um so in um right so that's the result. So in conclusion um I think, so what do you see through the numbers from the data? What can we learn out of from it? Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So this study, they place, they use the zirconia implant mm -hmm. and titanium implant, which is mm -hmm. zirconia one piece implant and then titanium yeah. tissue level implant. This is not the bone level implant, mm -hmm. right? 
right. so that's why and then they they want to show the response the soft tissue response around the neck of the implant mm -hmm. so i think uh you need to keep in mind this is not a real zirconia implant study mm -hmm. you understand it's what i'm right. saying right this it's rather a zirconia apartment study exactly so that's right. why please do not say that the zirconia implant has less bop than titanium implant according to this paper mm -hmm. okay so Very yeah i know which so we know this is a zirconia implant this is the uh, titanium implant but uh this is mm -hmm. the, the tissue level tissue level imp implant is a very good implant but not most likely but uh maybe half of the implant is going to be play uh, it, it's going to be uh, uh the bone level implant right correct so it, it in general the tissue level implant the titanium tissue level implant it just react differently as the titanium bone level implant as and that's what we we all know so when referring yeah. you know comparing the titanium to zirconia it, you cannot only you know, you cannot talk about these two implants. It's rather at the abutment level that exactly. there is a difference. Exactly. That's very true. Right. Yeah, that's what I see also because it's. I was like trying to understand what the article was talking about because I was a little bit, you know, I'm not familiar with this topic. But when I look at that, yeah, I think that's a perfect point. You know, it, you cannot just refer the zirconia implant as how it is. But um, talking back, so how do you see, you know, I, I think your time is almost there. So okay. Okay. Uh, how do you see the zirconia implant? Give us, you know, like some of your uh, insight about um, so far, how you experience with or how you learn about this potential of the implant. Yeah, so like um, the Dr. Kuo previously mentioned about like a prosthetic part, he critiqued mm -hmm. about uh, for like an uh, angulation of the implants for the one piece implant, right? Mm -hmm. So of course, like uh, we, as we know, the one piece implant has uh, some a lot of limitation actually, for mm -hmm. the surgical sandal point of view and also the prosthetic point of view. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it, when the two piece zirconia implant is, it gets popular, I think mm -hmm. it's everybody is going to play some more zirconia implant. So, mm -hmm. so uh, actually, I want to show some uh, slides, only the few slides. Is that OK to show? Mm -hmm. show sure. Slides? Sure. How should I do? But you have to share. Um, OK. Share slides. Can you share screen? Yeah, I got it. Upload okay. the file. Should I upload okay. the file? Uh, why don't you keep? Right, you have oh, to, but I can't do that because the keynote files are not spotted. Okay, okay. okay so cool. by the way, when, yeah, yeah, you can explain yeah. yeah. So like, I think it's two years ago. Like EAO, they have a, the consensus uh, report, and mm -hmm. then uh, they're going to show that what's going to happen in in the in the implant field in 2030, which is like more maybe like a 10 years later, mm -hmm. and then. So like there are a lot of op key opinion leader in the meeting and then right. they have, they they gave like a questionnaires and then mm -hmm. they said that um, almost 70% of the uh, key opinion leader think um, in 2030 we use the both titanium and then the ceramic the zirconia implant in the oh. regular mm -hmm. yeah so they and know, they know uh, and that's, right coming. and that's even the feature as we mentioned about that's the soft tissue how it's friendly to the soft tissue so once right. the soft tissue is adhere uh, more firmly around the implant it just prevents the periplant disease by nature so the prevention is better than cure right as you mentioned we don't want to have that you know it's it's happened already that we try to cure they will want to prevent it from that so i i think i agree with you yeah and and please continue sorry yes yeah, so, so right now i i am uh, as i mentioned before uh the Nobel and the stroman already had 
and not only the one piece but also two pieces in two piece mm. implant yeah, so right. the quality of the two piece implant is i'm i'm not sure it's questionable maybe but it's i think it's getting better and better so mm -hmm. and then maybe in the near future we're going to we're going to use it mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah that's definitely the category that's you know a innovative and modern concept that we should embrace and for now i think the experiment would def definitely need to you know keep our eye on it until it's more mature okay. right yeah it's a lot of, lot of research papers coming in uh, in a few mm -hmm. years so yeah and and that is the reason why I really appreciate your article because, you know, as you know, Dr. Kuo also mentioned about that. Uh, we in, tai in Taiwan, we Taiwanese don't get this exposure. But I think it's a, you know, it's a topic and it's also a trend that we are trying in the rest of the world, especially in Europe, they are trying to push the limit of zirconia implant. Also in Japan, I know that there's a group that they try to acknowledge the zirconia implant. So um, I highly appreciate how you brought us this attention and all the knowledge that you, you know you introduced us. So if it's possible, maybe you can share us your slide so I can share with the group later sure. on. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. So thank you very much. We have this time that Dr. Shoda has to run thank to you his. Thank so, so much. You control <laughs> the, the, everything. Right. Thank you very much. So I'm looking forward towards to the next. Um, literature review. Okay, so sure. we're looking yeah. forward towards to your more knowledge to bring us to the modern dental world. Okay, so I'll see you next time. So everybody have a good night. Bye. Yeah, good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.